are we on? Oh, hey, hi, and hello out there in TV land. It's time for another stupendous episode of Math Homework Helpers. Stick around, we'll be right back. with your math homework and give you prizes just for calling in. With us today are two fantastic teachers from Hillcrest Elementary School. We have the one and only Mr. Donovan. And from Dundalk Middle School, we have the other one and only Mr. Carl. Polly, how's your week going? It's going wonderful. I just wish it would snow. We need some serious snow in Baltimore County so I can go slabetting. Slabetting? Polly, what in the world's that? Oh, it's one of my favorite winter activities. I lay down on my bed, close my eyes, and pretend I'm sledding down a super snowy hill. Well, Polly, <coughs> the next time it snows, why don't you just go outside and actually go sledding? What? And get my fur all full of that cold snow? No way, man. I can't stand that freezing wet white stuff. Polly, you are one crazy puppet. Why, thank you so much, Mr. Kara. I try my best. Anyway, moving on. Boys and girls, if this is your first time watching, you should know that we have prizes. All you have to do is call into the show with a math question, and then you'll have a chance to win one of our four very cool math prizes from our Math Homework Helpers, Puck to Pick a Prize Wall. Mr. Kara, what are the prizes for today? This week's prizes are a lunch container, Earbuds, a pencil pack, and a notebook. Earbuds, pencil pouch. Don't awesome. forget that after we help our callers with their math problem, we'll drop the puck on the puck to pick a prize wall. And the caller will win whatever prize the puck lands on. Sounds great. Let's get things moving and go to the phones. The phone number to call is 410-494-1459. That number again is 410-494-1459. Polly, who's the first caller of the day? Our first caller today is Troy from Pinewood Elementary School, and Troy's in fifth grade. Hi, Troy! Hi! Hi, Troy, how are you? I'm good. Good. Do you have a math question for us? Yes, I do. Excellent. Um, it is 4,136. That's a big number. Divided by... Eight. Eight. Perfect. Troy, what strategies are your te is your teacher teaching you in school? Um, a standard algorithm. The standard algorithm. Perfect. Excellent. So I just need to reset this up then, correct? All right. I'm going to change our color so it's a little bit easier to see. So 4,136 divided by eight. So, okay. Troy, what would you do first when you see a problem like this? First, you see how many times 8 goes into 41. Er, yeah. Excellent, because 8 can't go into just 4, right? Yeah. Perfect. So, how many times does 8 go into 41? Um, 8 goes into 41 five times. Five times, and that's going to go right above that 1, correct? Yes. All right, what's our next step? Um, subtract. Um, you bring, you multiply the 5 and the 8. Excellent. And 5 times 8 is? 40. 40. And then what do we do? And then you subtract 41 by 40. Excellent. What's 41 minus 40? 1. 1. What's our next step, Troy? Um, you bring down the 3. Bring down our 3. Okay. Next step? Um, it goes into 13 one time, 
perfect because we are going to repeat and that is going to go right above that three and then I know to multiply again one times eight is eight, eight. then I know to subtract and 13 minus eight is five five very good and then awesome. I'm going to bring down my six you're really good at this Troy and how many times does eight go into 56 now Eight goes into 56 seven times. Seven awesome. times. Very good. And what is seven times eight, Troy? 56. Perfect. 56. So we have no remainder. And we subtract and we get zero. So, Troy, what is 4,136 divided by eight? 517. 517. All right, Troy. All right, Troy, here's your bonus question, okay? If you wanted to check your answer, what would you do? 517 times 8. Perfect. And what, what should we get? Yeah. Uh, you should get 4,136. Perfect. We okay. could do it, but I think we did it right. At least yeah. I think it's right. You think it's right, Mr. Uh, Kerry? I, I think, think it's right. right. I think. Paul, you think yeah, it's right? I, I, yeah, yeah, I do. Cool. Mm -hmm. Troy did an awesome job. He's Fantastic. awesome. Go, Troy. Guess what, nice Troy? Job, Troy? It's time to drop that puck. The pick a prize! Yay! Yay. Oh, okay, oh, Troy's excited! Yeah. Here we go! Yeah, go. go. <laughs> a notebook! You want a notebook, Troy? Nice job! Thanks for calling! Bye, Troy! Bye, Troy! Thanks for calling in! I don't know if Troy needed much of our help on that one. No, he, he was, was a, pretty smart that one, huh? He was. Hey, guess what? We have another caller. Who do Are we you have, ready? Polly? We have Aya from Norwood Elementary School, and she's in third grade. Hi, Aya! Hi! How you doing? Good. Um, can I tell you something real quickly? Sure. What did she say? Sorry. What did you say? I Anna? don't know. What? You can't say my. You kind of said my name wrong. Oh, how, how do you, how say, you say your Aya? name? Oh my goodness, Aya. Polly said. Aya, awesome. Thanks, Aya. Aya. Thank you for correcting us. Aya, what's your math question you have today? Um, Hector buys some six pack. Six pack. Of soda for a party. He buys 42 cans and all. How many six packs of soda did Victor buy? Draw a bar diagram to represent the problem. Awesome. So they were buying six pack sodas, and how many sodas did they buy? No, he he buys. So Victor buys some six six packs of soda for a party. He buys 42 cans in all. Oh, 42 cans. Okay, that's what I didn't hear. 42 cans in all. Okay, great. And then we need to draw a bar diagram to represent the problem? Yes. Okay, cool. So what? can you tell me how you would draw a bar diagram? If we have six packs of sodas and we need 42 cans in all, what should we do first? Or what should I do? Why don't you tell me what to do? So what I would do is first get the equations and then... I, how I do my bar diagram is like I put little squares. Yeah. And I put like. I'll draw six squares, right? And that'll show me um, yeah. a six pack so of sodas, right? Then while I'm putting, I put the six inside the square. And then skip the count until I get to 42. Perfect, right? Yeah, we'll just draw. So here's our, here's our first six pack of soda, right? So if yeah. we have one six pack, how many sodas do we have? Six, and then if we have another six pack, and I could just kind of replace another uh, another bar, like you said. So if we have six here and six here, how many do we have total? Twelve. Twelve, perfect. And then another six, how many will we have? Eighteen. Eighteen, and another six, how many will we have? My bar diagram's kind of struggling. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Great. Twenty-four. We're almost there. Another six, how many will we have? 30. 30, exactly right. So I'm going to go all the way from here. We have 30. And we're almost there. So if I do 6 more, what's 30 plus 6 more? 36. And 36 plus 6 more is going to give us how much? Um, 42. 42, awesome. So here's our bar diagram that we drew. We have six packs of soda, and how many six packs of soda did we need to get to 42 cans? Um, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three,
two, three, five, six, seven. Six. Oh, six would get us to 36. We I had, mean, we had s one, two, three, four, five, six, seven six packs to get us to uh, 42 cans. Seven six packs. Do you know how I would write this as a multiplication problem, Aya? No. Are you sure? Are you not sure? Um. Oh, six times seven equals one two. Awesome. Very good. Great good job, job, Aya. Totally right. If we have groups of six in our vertical uh, rows here, and we have seven groups, we'll do six times seven to get forty-two. Great job. You know what? Now I'm kind of thirsty. I'm thirsty too. Me too. Yeah, I like root beer. Can we get some root beer on the set? <laughs> root uh -oh. beer. Paul, are you allowed to drink root beer? I. Uh, oh, I. Yes, yes. The answer is yes. I am. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I'm not sure about okay, that. Okay, so I. Uh, are you ready to drop the puck to pick a prize? Aya. Aya, can you say drop that puck? Drop that puck. All right. Yay! Okay, here we go. Another oh, you got the awesome. notebook. Congratulations, cool. Aya. Thanks for calling, Aya. Great job. Bye, Aya. Uh, Bye. We have a new caller. Already? Yeah. Oh, yeah. man, everything's and, Okay, perfect. so this Things is... running a little too smoothly, Polly. Oh, I mean, do you I, want some problems? I'll call Max. I don't want I don't want. You know, problems. Max always calls his problems. Yeah, Max does yeah. always call his problems. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why we're I think that's why, why everything's smoothly going Alex. smoothly, because Max isn't here today. Right. Who's next? Okay, Amber is up, and she's from Nord Elementary School, and she's in third grade. Let's say hi to Amber. Hi, Amber! Hey, Amber. Hi, Amber. Hi. How are you today? Good. Excellent. You have a math question for us? Um, actually, the one that I did is the one that I wanted to do. Oh, oh darn oh, well. it. Oh. Were you listening carefully? Yes. Okay, well, do you have another question we could answer instead? This one I already know, but it says write your own multiplication story problem for one of the following equations. Okay. Okay, so you were writing a story? Yes. It's okay, and are you, which one are you doing? The six times eight? Yes. Okay, excellent. So... Can you tell us a story that would match that? Hmm. I didn't make it yet, but... Okay. You, well, know, you know what we could do? I think we could use, we could kind of use what we did with Aya's question and kind of combine it with this question, right? Because I see that six. And what did the six represent in the previous question, Amber? Um, six um, packs. Of yeah. Yeah. Six Right? Or six packs of sodas. Okay. That is a great idea. So maybe, Amber, you could have a party and be buying six packs of soda. And how many six packs would you need to buy? Um, eight. You would need to buy eight. And then how many will use Mr. Donovan's bar graph? So, but on this, you don't need a bar graph. You, all you need is just um, you right. just need your words oh, to cool. tell your okay. story. Okay, yeah, excellent. Works. So do you like the party idea and the sodas? Yeah. Oh, perfect. I like that idea, too. Well, I think in our question, too, that Amber writes, you could say, show your answer using a bar graph. You could say that. You could. And so, Amber, do you know if you bought eight six-packs of soda, how many you would have? Uh, I'm getting my paper off. Okay. All right. But that, at least we could write that question, right? If you have Absolutely. six packs, you could say how many sodas how will many Amber have for her party? Or how many sodas can Polly drink? Mm. Oh, lots, oh, I like lots that. Of sodas. That sounds like a lot of sodas, Polly. Especially root beer. A lot mm. of root beer. Yep. 48. How many? 48. 48. And how'd you get 48? Um, I skip counted from my multiplication on paper. Great job. Eight oh, times six. Excellent. Cool. Eight times six. Lots of sodas for Polly. Yeah, that's fantastic. Lots of well, sodas. I think these are for Amber. Oh, I bet Amber would share with Polly. Mm, I'm, uh, I don't know, Amber. She might. Amber, would you share with Polly? Of course. Of oh, course. Nice. See, I go. told you she would share. <laughs> Thanks, that's Amber. Sweet. Amber, you know what time it is? Yeah, um, she dropped the puck. Drop, drop that the puck. puck. Good job. Oh, man. Oh. Uh, Pencil Palooza. 
Awesome. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Good Bye, job. Amber. Bye, Amber. Okay, guess what now? Mr. Kara. Yeah. Mr. Donovan. Yes. It's Nathan from Relay Elementary School. Let's welcome Nathan cool. to our show at Math Homework Helpers Hideout. He's in fifth grade. Hey, Nathan! Hey, Nathan. Hi, Nathan. Hi. How you doing, Nathan? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, what's your question? Thank you. Um, my question is, um, so A equals 80. And I have a problem that says uh, 4A equals something. Okay, you said A equals 80 or N equals 80? Uh, A equals 80. Okay, and then what was the second part? And then it's going to be 4A plus 6A equals something. Okay, 4A plus 6A equals, we'll call it, why don't we call it B? We'll try and solve for B. How does that sound? Okay. Okay, great. So how, and can you see it on TV? Is this the, the, the right question we're talking about? That's the right question. Okay, great. So how could we solve 4a? If you have a number next to a variable a, what operation are you going to be using? Uh, multiplication. Right, and we could even like put that in parentheses if we wanted. So we know yep. 4, and we're going to multiply that by 80. 80. Do you know how to solve that? Uh, yeah, so uh, 4 times 0 is 0. Uh huh. And then uh, 4 times 8 is 32 x to 0 to 32, and then you get 320. Awesome. I like to do the same thing. 4 times 8 gives us our basic fact of 32, and then we'll <laughs> annex to 0. Super, awesome. Super job. So now we have 320, and then we can do the same thing for 6a, right? We could do 4 times, nope, oh, not 4, I, sorry. No, yeah. <laughs> 6 times 80. Right, and what's 6 times 80? Uh, 6 times 80 equals 480. Awesome, same deal, right? We did 6 times 8 yep. to get 48. And that was the same thing That's from our, uh, sodas we're gonna our have. sodas, right? That's yeah. a lot of sodas. Four, oh, and, and you said annex or zero. Great job. Yeah. Cool. So now we have these two big numbers, 320 and 480. And what other operation do we need to do? You have to do addition. Right. So can you help me add? Yeah. So 0 plus 0 is 0. Uh huh. A plus 2 is 10, which, which I do where I put the 0 on the bottom and regroup the 1 to the 3. Great job. Great math vocabulary as well. And then uh, we do 4 plus 4 is 8. Great job. So what's your answer? 800. Good job. 800. 800 sodas. 800 sodas. That's, 800 a, lot sodas. That's a lot of sodas. We could take those 800 sodas and we could add the 42 sodas we had before and then the 48 sodas and we'll have like... 890 sodas, is that right, Mr. Kara? Holy smoke. Uh, that's a lot of that is a lot of sodas. That's a lot of sugar. Oh, Holly, man. I don't know if you we, could drink that much. I, I think I would share with my friends. Oh, that's yes, okay. here at Math Homework's Helpers Hideout. Yep, we'd have, we'd have the biggest party ever. Yeah. yeah. That'd be a huge party. Big party with lots of soda. We got with all soda. the callers. Okay, Nathan, what'd you say? What, what should we do now? Uh, we should, uh, the answer 92, and that's our answer. It is our answer. So, so now what's it that time we're done, for? Right. Oh. It's time to drop the puck. Drop you ready? Drop that puck. Here we go. Drop that puck. Yeah, drop that puck. Oh, you got the Tesla cool. That's one of my favorites. Oh. Awesome job. Yeah. Great job, Actually, Nathan. Thanks for calling in. Bye, Nathan. You know, Hi. Bye, bye bye. Thanks for calling. You know, we, we do use math so many different ways in life, not just in math class. Let's head out to the streets of Baltimore County Public Schools to see who Maria is talking with now. Math on the street. Hola, yo soy Maria, and today I'm here at our BCPS Logistics Center. We have a huge mailroom. I wonder how they use math here. Hola, Mo. I'm very curious. How many schools are there in Baltimore County? Hola, Maria. There are about 174 schools in the county. Wow. Do you deliver mail to all of them? Well, yes, but it's not just me. There are eight other drivers who deliver the mail also. Oh, so 
If you have 174 schools to deliver mail to and eight mail people, how many schools do you deliver mail to each day? Well, this is how we can use the math to see how many schools we visit. They are 174 schools mm -hmm. and eight drivers. Mm -hmm. So 174 divided into eight equals 21.75. Since this doesn't come out evenly, one of us volunteers to take on an extra school. Oh, wow, that's great teamwork and great use of math. Also, Maria, each school receives over 50 pieces of mail each day. That's over 8,000 pieces of mail we deliver. Wow, that's a lot of mail and a lot of math. Thank you, Mo, for sharing. You're welcome, Maria. Guess what? What's up, Holly? Bobby is on the phone and he's from Arbutus Middle School. Oh, and perfect. he's in sixth grade. Are you ready for this tough question? Bobby's going to have a hard one. I know it. Hi, I Bobby. Hope so. Hi, Hello. Bobby. How are you? I'm good. Good. You got a question for us? Yes. Excellent. Okay. A small school has 60% boys and rest girls. If the number of boys is 36, what is the total number of boys and girls all together in the school? Okay, so I got 60% boys. Yes. What was the total? Rest girls. And girls? Yes. Okay, 60% 60 60 boys and the rest are girls. The rest are girls, okay. And then you said how many, we know, we know one more piece of information, right? Yes. What else do we know? Um, there's 60%. There's only 36 boys, and we don't know the number of girls. Excellent. Perfect. So there are 36 boys. So, Bobby, let me ask you a question, because my students mm -hmm. at Dundalk are doing this, too. How is mm -hmm. your teacher uh, teaching you to set this up? What strategies are you using? Um, I'm using, so you just got to remember the percentage of boys, and you just got to find the number of how much girls there are. Okay, excellent. So are you writing proportions? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so can you help me out here? When I go to write my proportion, what always goes over the number 100? The percent. Excellent. Ish. So I always put my percent over 100. I probably should have written that a little bit better. Yes, and then you put the number as the part or the whole. So I think 36 is the part, and you got to find the whole. Very good. So then we have our part over our and whole. Good. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Love that you know that. This is great because I, I teach uh, a sixth grade class at Hillcrest, and we haven't done this yet. So this is going to be a nice little review for me. Oh, OK, excellent. Mm -hmm. So, Bobby, I always like to start off with what I know right away, and that is always 60%, the percent is over 100. Yep. Then I need to look at the rest, and I need to figure out, is 36 a part, or is it a whole? I think 36 is a part because it's part of a number. Excellent. And we know that there are only 36 boys, but we don't know how many girls there are or how many, there are stu how many students are in the whole class, right? Yep. So 36 is going to be our part, and I always like to use the x variable for our unknown. Mm -hmm. So does this look good? Yes. Excellent. So what do you do next? What would you do? Um, as I know from my math, I think you're supposed to multiply the 36 and the 60 and then divide it by 100, and that's your answer. Okay, so let's try that. 36, you're going to divide? I, 36 times 60 divided okay. by 100. All right, so let's try that out. 36 times 60. Equals, okay, so 36 times 60. So zero, zero can't go into both numbers. Right. Zero times six is six, or zero, sorry. Yep, and then zero times three equals zero. Excellent. Six times six. Okay. And then you got to add your extra zero, and then six times six equals 36. Excellent. Okay. Put the three on top of the other three, and then six, six times three equals 18, plus three equals 21. Okay. Awesome.
So we don't even need to add because we know it's 2,160. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then what did you say you would do next? You would divide by 100. Divide by 100. Okay, so what are we going to get if we divide by 100? It will take away a zero, and I think 216. You think the answer is 216? Yeah. All right, I'm going to put that down here. Whoops. And I'm going to show you another trick that we've been using once we know this method. Can I show you oh. that? Yes. Okay. So one thing that we've been doing, we have been learning the cross multiply. So okay. 36 times 100 is what? Um, 30, 3600. Okay. And this is a way that you could check yourself too. So we have 3600 or 3600. Yeah, because I'm looking at the 216 and I'm kind of I'm yeah. kind of confused. If if we have more boys than girls, then how can we have 216 girls right. if we only have 13 or 36 boys? So it kind of doesn't really that's why we wanted to make yeah. sure we went and checked cool. ourselves. Okay. I like it. So we do our cross multiplying. We do our 36 times yeah. our 100. And then we come up here to our 60 and we divide that number by 60. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use my basic math facts here. 6 goes into 36 how many times? It goes. 3,600, 3,600, yeah. Okay. Um, 60 goes into 3,600 six times. Six Close. times. Right? Six times six. So, yes. So, our basic but, fact would be 36 divided by six, but yeah, we still need to annex another zero because there's two zeros in our dividend. Right. So, it's going to, I think it's, and we could check, right? We could do multiplication to yes. check. We could do six times 60. But that would only give us 360, so we need to annex one more zero to get 3,600. So I think our answer is mm -hmm. not six, but 60. 60. 60. Cool. Excellent. So right now I'm thinking there are 60 girls. Okay. But that doesn't make sense because if there's 36 boys and if there's 60 girls, right. <laughs> so it can't be 60, but you we said earlier that the denominator or X is going to represent the whole, right? So if this is, there's 36 boys, that means that's 36 boys out of how many, how many students? 60. 60, yes. awesome. So the one thing I also want to show you is if you simplify 60 one hundredths. Right, I was thinking that too. Mm -hmm. Yes, because this is probably really the way our teachers like us to learn this. This is a really good strategy, the cross multiplying, to check yourself. But if you simplify 60 one hundredths, do you know how to do that, Bobby? Mm -hmm. That's okay. So I want to make 60 one hundredths as small as it can be so that it can't be made any smaller. But I want to make an equivalent fraction or ratio. So, okay. if I divide both by 10, that will give me 6 tenths, but you know what? I can make that smaller. I can then divide that by 2. Mm -hmm. And then that will make it... Three. What would that be? 3 fifths. 3 fifths. Excellent. Once I have, and I'm going to put that over here, my 3 fifths... Makes the problem a lot easier. It makes right. the problem a lot easier, and then I can say, okay, what did I do to the 3 to get to 36? Um, had... You multiplied it by 12. Excellent. So I multiplied by 12, and if I multiply what I do to the top, I do to the bottom. If I multiply my 5 by 12, I'm going to put it over here, hopefully 60. you yeah. would get 60. Very good. Cool. So there, you have two different strategies you can use in school tomorrow. So do we, need, do we still need to answer how many girls we have, Bobby, or do we need to know how many students we have in all? Uh, how many students are in all. Oh, oh okay. so we still need to do one more operation. What do we need to do, Bobby? Find out the girls. We oh, found wait, out our I th girls. I thought the 60, isn't the 60 all, all the students, or is that the girls? If this, I thought the denominator meant the whole. 
Is this 36 out of 60? That's what I thought it was. Wouldn't that make sense? Oh, there are 60. <laughs> yeah, because there's 60 total. I jumped ahead of myself. So 40% would be, 40% of 60 will be how many girls we have. So do we need to know how many girls we need, what, how many girls they have, Bobby, or just the total number of kids? Um, if I did it correctly, the number of girls would have to be 24. Because right. you would want to subtract. Perfect. Yes. Cool. Very good. Well Sweet. done. So that we was have so hard. 24 girls. Right. And 60 is our total. Students all together. Cool. That okay. was one crazy awesome. problem. Man, that was a tough problem. That yes, it was. Woo! Good. You should you give him a great great job, Bobby. Bobby. Thank you. Bobby, nice can you job. say drop that puck? Drop the puck, drop the puck. Drop the puck, drop the puck, drop the puck. Oh, and, oh, you got lunch a lunch container. container, a reusable lunch container from BCPS TV. So you're not wasting any trash. Good job. Yeah, we like to be green. I love that. I need one of those. Yeah, I need a few of those. Whew. That was so hard. Do you guys week. need a rest? I think you might need to take a little nap. Lay your head down. Maybe Polly can put some of her old lunch in there for him, too. What do you think, Polly? What? Oh, man, Does he this. want some soda? I have some soda too. Yeah. Oh, and soda? Oh, and it comes with a yeah. fork and a knife. I love Ooh, that. Oh, fork little and a knife. Cutlery and a little spot for it. That's pretty neat. Cool. Okay, friends, we have All another right, caller. Let's you ready? Are you, are you rested? Here we go. It's Jason from Norwood Elementary School. Hi, Jason. Hey, Jason. Hi, Jason. Hi. How, How you doing? doing? Jason? Good. Jason, what's your question you have for us today? Um, uh, <clears throat> it says here that Vector buys some packs of soda for a party. He buys 42 cans and all. How many six packs of soda did Victoria buy? Draw a water di diagram. That sounds Ooh. familiar. It that sounds does. really familiar. I'm going to go back we to where that. we were before. There it is. Yep. And we already had this question, um, Jason. If you want, we could do another question, but we drew our bar diagram. We did uh, six-pack groups, and we found out that to get to 42, we had, can you count with me, ready? One six-pack, another six-pack would be how many? One six-pack for what? So, we, so one six, oh, so, you know, why don't we skip count by sixes, and that'll get us to our 42. But we had six, can you, um, Six, another six, six would be how much? Six plus. Twelve. Hello. Twelve, Twelve right? Mm -hmm. And another six would be 18. Six, 12, 18. And then another six would be how much? Um. 24. And then we said 30. We did our five, six packs, and that got us oh. to 30. 30. And, and then we needed two six packs more. So we had five six packs plus two six packs to give us how many? 36. Well, 36 plus six more would give us 42, and that was seven six packs, right? One, two, One. three, four, five, six, seven. Awesome. And so Polly would like to request root beer. Root beer, right. yes, please. We need root beer. Yes, root beer. Jason, Yum. did you have another question that we could help you with, or does that help you out? That helped me out. OK, awesome. Thanks, hey. Jason. We have to drop a puck for Jason. Yeah, we do have to drop a puck. Even Jason, though we already did it before, you we, have we to still say, helped him, right? Yeah, you helped him we a lot. Did. And he still called. He sure did. And, oh, and I hear it. here we go. And he still wins the prize. <gasps> the notebook. notebook. Awesome. Congratulations, Jason. Thanks, Thanks for Jason. calling in. Okay. Bye, Jason. Bye. Stick with this one. Yeah, cool. All right, do we have another car, Polly? We do. It's I feel like maybe. I need another try. Cause I think I'd already done that absolutely. one. Absolutely. Oh, you go for absolutely. We need to do that, too. Guess who's on the line? Who's that? It's Mamie from Wildwood Elementary School. Hey, Mame. How are you? She's ya? in fourth grade. Hi, Hi Mamie. Hi. Is, are we saying your name correct? Mame? No, it's Mamie. 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 Okay, cool. Mamie, Hi, what's Mamie. your question? Um, Mrs. Freeburn has 152 seeds to plant in her garden. She wants to plant the seeds in rows of seven. How many rows will she make? A lot. Awesome. Mm. Seven in each row. Is she planting soda seeds? <gasps> soda? Is that a thing? That's not a thing. Oh, I don't 
Oh, man, Mr. Donovan, you like had me all excited. Soda today. Oh, okay, Mamie, what have you been doing at Wellwood Elementary School to solve a question like this? Standard algorithm. Standard algorithm, okay. So I'm going to draw my division house like that. Wait, wait a second. Oh, we're doing um, interpreting the remainder. You're doing with a remainder? Mm-hmm. Okay, no, no problem. Cool, okay. Well, we'll come back to that because we want to know how many rows she needs to plant, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So which number, the 152 or the 7, goes inside of our division house? Um, the dividend. Right, which one's the dividend? 152. Great job and Very great good. math vocabulary. And if the dividend goes on the outside, that means the 7 is going to go on the outside, and the 7, what would you call the 7 What if we're thinking about our Divisor. math? Divisor. Divisor. Great job. job. Cool. So if we're using a standard algorithm, we can ask those same questions Ms. Takara was asking earlier, right? We can divide, multiply, subtract, and I throw this other one in here, compare, bring down, and repeat or remainder. So 7, does 7 fit inside of 1, Mamie? Um, no. No. I, like, I teach my students to either X this out or circle it. That way it kind of just holds that place um, so we can keep everything kind of nice, neat, and organized, right? Kind of looks like an X-Men sign. My okay. teacher told us that if we can't do that, we have to do 15 divided by 7. If we can't do 1 divided by 7. Right, you can't do it. So how many 7s fit inside of 15? 2. 2. And then we can multiply. What's 2 times 7? 14. Perfect. And what comes next? You subtract 15 minus 14. What are you left with? One. And then what? Um, you drop the two. Right. This is where kind of our compare comes in, right? If we had, if we had subtracted and we, we were left with more than seven, then we would know that we'd probably have to um, divide it by a larger number. But here, since the one is less than seven, then we could bring down our next, our next number. And now we have 12. How many sevens fit inside of 12? say um, one. Oh, one. One, right? I don't know if you said <laughs> um or one. Great job. One, and we can multiply and subtract again. One times seven, how much? One times seven is seven. And we're going to subtract again. How much are we left with? Um, five. Five. Super job. And what does this five tell us? That's the remainder. Right. Right. Have. right. There's our remainder. Remainder five. Okay. Now, Mamie, here's the trick question, though. Because you can't have, if, especially if we're planting seeds, we can't, and we have seven in each row, we can't plant 21 rows and have five remaining. So how many rows of um, seeds is she going to plant, or does she need to plant? 21. What, what about these five seeds that are left over? Where are they going to go? We can't forget about them, right? Because we still have all these seeds to plant. So they would need to go into another what? Oh, we have to start a new row. Yeah, we'd have to start a new row, right? It's not going to be full no. of seven, but it would be in its next row, right? It would only be a row of five seeds. So it wouldn't be 21. How many rows would we have, Mamie? 22. 22, right? It'd be 22 rows. Uh, if your question asks you how many full rows, then we would say, 21 full rows, but we can't forget about those five seeds that are left over, okay? I think that was kind of tricky, Mr. Donovan. I think that was tricky, too. I think they were purposely trying to trick you. But it's a good thing you're here to help. That's right. Can't get past us, right? Mm -mm, not cool. at all. Great job, Mamie. Do you have any other questions? No. Awesome. Great job. Hey, Mamie, say it. Get ready, because we're going to drop the puck. Are you ready to say it? Yes. Okay. Get ready. Yes. Get set. Yes. Drop that puck. Lunch container. Oh, another lunch container. Sweet. Congratulations, Mamie. Congratulations, right. Mamie. Bye. Reusable lunch box. Reusable lunch box. See lunch you later. Container. Hey, we have another caller. All right. Oh, we're yay. Rolling. Yeah. So it's Audie from Relay Elementary School, and she's in fifth grade, too. Hi, Audie. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? I am very well, thank you. You have a math question for us? Yes. 
Perfect. What is it? So it's three. Wait, sorry. It's x equals ninety. Okay. Then what is three x plus forty? All right. I yeah, love these. So this, this is a tough question for a fifth grader. I like it. It is a tough question. So Audie, what do we need to do to solve this? Um, put the x. Um, replace the x for the ninety. Excellent. So if I replace x with ninety and it looks like this, is that right? No, you need to put the multiplication. Excellent. Good job. Because whenever there's a variable next to a number, that tells us to multiply. So now we have 3 times 90 plus 40. So am I going to multiply first or am I going to add first? Multiply first. Right. How do you know that, Audie? Because the order of operations, oh, man. Uh, multiplication is first. I tried to trick you and you passed. Great job. All right. So, Audie, what do you think 3 times 90 is? I always like to look at these basic math Two. facts. 270. You got three it. 3 times 9 equals Good job, Audie. 27 and annex 0. Annex is 0. All right. 270 plus 40. We can set it up this way if it's a little easier for you, but I think you have this. So what's zero plus zero, Audie? Zero. Excellent. And seven plus four? Eleven, and then put, put the one in the hundreds place. Good. I'm going to regroup that one. Yeah. So what is one plus two? Three. Three. So that means 4x plus 40 equals... 300, 310. 310, very wow, good. Wow, that was that fast was awesome. for such a hard problem. Right. I, she did a great job. A lot of great good math at vocabulary, that. math terminology yes. as well. Perfect. Those words were big words too. They were hard for Polly. Well, <laughs> but, maybe uh, you know what? root beer, we, Polly. You know? I, oh, I've got to drink too much root beer. And maybe then too many root beer. Does it make me yeah. get smarter? Right. <laughs> Sometimes. Maybe. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> okay, but you know All what right. I know what to do now? What should we do now? Audie's going to say drop that puck and we're going to pick a prize. Yay. Audie, let's say it. Drop that puck. Drop, drop that, that puck. puck. Right. Good job. <laughs> a notebook. Hey, Congratulations, Audie. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. Good job. Bye, Audie. Bye. Bye. I'm getting so tired with all these hard we, math questions. We are cruising. They we are, are amazing today. We well, are now cruising. it's Scarlett's on the phone from Hillcrest Elementary wait, School. Wait a second. Wait, I have a Scarlett at, at Hillcrest <gasps> Elementary School. You I know Scarlett, you. Mr. Donovan? Scarlett, is this Scarlett from my class? Scarlett, Mr. Donovan? Uh oh. <laughs> yes. All right, Scarlett. Wow. Scarlett, can you turn down your TV just a little bit? Okay. Or a, or a lot of bit, actually. Hi, Scarlett. Scarlett, I brought a copy of your homework today. But what, Hi. can you read me the question that you're trying to solve? I'm doing number eight. What ordered pair represents the reflection of the point th four and three-eighths, negative six and one-fourth, plus both axes? All right, this is a great question. All right, I'm going to write the points here. Whoops. Yes. Four and three eighths, comma, and negative six and one fourth. And we want to reflect it across both axes. OK. Now, Scarlett, I bet we can get through this. Scarlett, what do you know about our two points here? Which one's the x coordinate? Which one's the y coordinate? The x coordinate is 4 and 3 eighths, and the y coordinate is negative 6 and 1 fourth. Awesome. OK, perfect. So if we were to write this same, um, well, you know what? I'm going to draw a picture, because I like drawing pictures. Scarlett, do you have an idea which quadrant do you think this number, this, this um, coordinate's going to land in? 
Yeah. Okay, where, where are we going to go? Let's say I start at the, at the, the middle, right, that origin. And uh -huh. the x coordinate, am I going to go left or right? Right. Right, to get to 4 and 3 eighths, right? Let's just pretend uh -huh. it's here, right? And then to get to the uh -huh. negative 6 and 1 fourth on the y axis, am I going to go up or am I going to go down? Down. Right, we're going to go down. And we're going to pretend that it lands right about here, right? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So here's our point. We'll label it with an S for your name, Scarlett. All right, now, Scarlett, if we want to go across the x-axis, which is here, and we want to imagine that we're reflecting it on the other side of the x-axis, right? Mm -hmm. What would happen to our x-coordinate here if it was on the other side of the x-axis? If it was it, on would, it would be Oh shoot, did I negative, just start one? Oh yeah, no, no, I did it right. Negative right. four and three eighths. Well, that would be all the way over here, right? If we go on the mm -hmm. other side of this x-axis, it's actually gonna change the other coordinate because this uh, the x coordinate's gonna stay the same, right? It's still gonna be positive four and three eighths. Oh. And correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Carr. Yeah. I just want to make sure. That's why yeah. I draw a picture, because I want to make sure everything's correct. Right? Now, what's, what changes, even though we're going across the, the x-axis, right, the y-coordinate's going to change. It's no longer going to be a negative number, right? Mm -hmm. What number is it going to be? It's going to be a positive number. Right. What positive number is it going to be, Scarlett? Six and one fourth. Right, six and one fourth. Super job, right? It's a little confusing because we're going across the x axis, but the y coordinate changes, right? So there's our first one, right? Is four, four and three eighths, and positive six and negative one fourth. And you're already on the right track, Scarlett, because if we change the y axis on the first one. I'm sorry, the y coordinate to find our first reflection. What do you think we should change to show the reflection across the other axis? How would we go this way? We have to go left. We would go left. And which coordinate would change, right? We started here, but instead we're going back this way, right? What number is mm -hmm. going to change? The x-coordinate. The, the x-coordinate, right? And what is it going to change to? Whoops. Um, negative 4 and 3 eighths. Perfect. Good job. Negative 4 and 3 eighths. And what's the y-coordinate on this reflection? It's still what? Positive or negative 6 and 1 fourth? Negative? Yeah, it's still, right, it's still negative. So in this case, we changed the, the y axis changed here. And in this case, the x, or I'm sorry, the y coordinate changed in our first reflection. And in the second reflection, the x coordinate changed. So our two reflections are here. Does that make sense, Scarlett? Uh huh. Cool. Great job. Do you have any other, or do you have any other questions to clarify that? Does that make sense to you? Uh-huh. Cool. Super job. It's a tough one. The yeah, the, the picture, picture was helps. great. Yeah. Definitely helps to make sense. Right, Scarlett? Make sure, uh, yeah, make sure our terminology <laughs> gets correct. Well, I sure am glad that Scarlett understands because I'm a little confused, Mr. Donovan. I think I might need a tutor. That's fine. <laughs> okay. I charge 83 sodas per hour. What? I think we should drop the puck. Okay, oh, let's okay. drop the puck. <laughs> Good idea. Okay, Here let's we do go. It. Scarlett, say drop that puck. Drop that puck. Yay. Great job. Yay. And you got a notebook. 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 Super job. Thanks for calling, Scarlett. Thanks, Bye, Scarlett. Scarlett. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. Before we take our next caller, we are going to head out to one of our very own Baltimore County Public Schools and check in for a Mighty Math Minute. Hi, my name is Brandon, and this is your Mighty Math Minute. Math, math. 
today I'm doing the distributive property. The array is seven times six, but I, but I broke the array into two smaller arrays. The first array is five times six, and the second array is two times six. Five times six equals 30, and two times six equals 12. So 30, 30 plus 12, 12 equals 42. So seven times six equals 42. And that's how you do the distributive property. Man, he did a really nice job. That was amazing. That's pretty cool. Well, we have another caller now. Oh, good. It's, it's cool. Vladimir from Pinewood Elementary School. He's in fourth grade. Can everybody say hi? Hey. Hi, Vladimir. Hi, Vladimir. Hello. How are you today? I'm good. What about you? I am great. Thank you. Oh, hey, he's fine, young, too. Young person. I like that. So nice. You have a math problem for us, Vladimir? Yep. Let's All hear right. it. Let's hear it. Okay, um, my math problem says Barbara is selling her, her classroom floor <coughs> with square tiles. She wants six tenths of the square tiles to be red. If she uses eight red tiles, how many square tiles will be used to cover the floor? Draw it an area model to help. Cool. Okay, six tenths red tiles? Uh, yep. Okay, and then what came after that, Vladimir? Um, it said to, um, if she uses eight red tiles, how many square tiles will be used to cover the floor? Draw the, an area model to help solve. Okay, so she, they're using eight red tiles? And do we want to, and we want to know how many other tiles they're using? Is that right? No, it's asking you if there's six tenths of two, two, the, the girl wants six tenths of the square tiles to covered uh, uh, with red tiles, and she, and she uses eighteen red tiles. How many square tiles will be used? To cover the floor. Okay. Okay, so it's six tenths square tiles, and she uses yep. eight red tiles. Eighteen. Eighteen. 18 red okay. Tiles. Okay. I think I think it's. Hmm. I think. Vladimir, we appreciate your patience. Can you read the beginning one more time? Because I, th I did you say it's six tenths of the room are red tiles? Can you read it one more time, nice and slow? Barbara is, tell, is tiling her classroom floor with square tiles. She wants six tenths of the square tiles to be red. Okay. So does that mean six tenths of the whole room? So she wants right. That we're we're just trying to figure this right. out with you, Vladimir. So she wants six tenths of the whole room to be red. Yep, with and red she, tiles. And she has 18 red tiles that she's using. Is that right? Yep. Okay, I think, I think if six tenths of the room or six tenths of our 18 tiles, that's kind of what I think it sounds like. Is that what you think? That's what I was right? thinking. If we have 18 red tiles and we want to cover six tenths of the room, with those red tiles. We want it six tenths of 18. Does that sound about right, Vladimir? Yep. OK. What sort of operations have you been doing at Pinewood? I know you said an area model, but have you been adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? Uh, we have been adding. You have been adding. OK. OK, so you're just doing repeated addition? Correct. OK. Using an area model. Hmm. So are you? 
Have you been multiplying at all or no? I mean, like, that's technically what we're doing. That is exactly what you're doing? You're multiplying? Where well, it's kind of like multiplying and adding at the same time. Oh, yeah, okay, well, well, yeah, yeah, they're related. Yeah, right, right. right. Okay, multiplication cool. is repeated okay. addition, so that makes perfect yep. sense. And if I see that word of, what does that word of mean? Do, do you ever talk about that in your class, Vladimir? Mm, nope. Well, if it's six tens of, that usually means multiplication, I think. It does. That's kind of what it sounds like to me. Six tenths times 18, and we need to use an area model. Is that right? Yes. Cool. All right. So I got to tell you, I have been in middle school the past couple years. No problem. Area models kind of tricked me up a little bit. Yeah. How no are problem. you with it? I could multiply that using the standard algorithm. And that's probably what we'll use to check. Um, we could but certainly if, do that. if I was going to do an area model using this, I would start with my 18 squares, right? Perfect. Um, Hmm, that's a lot of area models, though. That's what I was but thinking. But you know what? It's OK. Because <laughs> we'll just imagine, hmm. Well, could we I do nine enough. of them and then double it? Yeah, let's do nine, right? We'll do Perfect. nine. That's a great idea, Mr. Kara. And Teamwork. hopefully, Vladimir, you can check in with your, and I'm, I'm going too big as it is. Let's go back. And hopefully, you can check in with your math teacher tomorrow and make sure we did the right thing. But I think we're on the right track. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. OK, so if we have 6 tenths of each, what we could do is we could do repeated addition. So if we have 0 and 6 tenths of each, we could do 0 and 6 tenths or 6 tenths times 9 over 1, and we could multiply it, right? So if, yeah. we were, gonna, if we we're going to do this using an area model, we would split each one of these into 10 pieces. And I know that's not a really good job because it's really, really small, right? So if we split each one into, into 10 pieces, we would color in six of each. And I actually did that the wrong way. We would want to do it the other way. We want to go split each one into 10 pieces all the way across the bot uh, um, horizontally like this. Because then if we did it each one into 10 pieces, then we could color in six of those 10. One, two, three, four, five, six would be about this many. So, and then we would go six tenths all the way across all 18 of these, which would take us a little while. So we could use a shortcut, like Mr. Kerr was saying, and we could multiply or use your repeated addition, like you said, and we could do six over 10 times 18 which is going to give us 60 plus 48, which is 108 over 10, which is, I'm not sure. Does that sound right, Mr. Kerr? I, I, I was focused it's on okay, the puck, yeah. Mr. Donovan. 48, 60 plus 48 is 108 yes. over 10. And that's how many we're going to have. It's going to be so 10 108 and tenths. 8 tenths. Yep. Or 10 and 8 tenths red tiles is going to be our answer. Tenths after we simplify. That cool. was a tough one. That was a tough one. That I think we're one. tired. I think you might be tired now. Yeah, we're kind of pinched you on need time. Some Sorry, root Vladimir, beer. but I think it's 10.8 red tiles to cover six tenths of your room. And I think Vladimir gets a prize now. I Let's drop so that puck. All right, here we go, Come Vladimir. On, Vladimir. We're dropping the puck. Oh, the earbuds. Earbuds. First of all, awesome. thanks for calling, Vladimir. Well, kids, oh, hey. have a good one. Congratulations. That's all the time we have for this episode. Be sure to tune in next week. And remember, we do re-air each episode, so be sure to watch. You can even watch these episodes online on our YouTube page. Check it out. Be sure to tell all of your friends to watch, too. We look forward to seeing everybody again next time. Only, Only here on BCPS TV. TV.